Hmm. <laughs> Forgot to click on that. It's been a few weeks since I've been hosting. Uh, apologies for that delay there. Uh, so good morning, good afternoon, good evening, as I, I would like to say. Thanks, Anthony, for filling in for me while I was in Scotland. Um, yeah, interesting to be back and obviously having a week off for internationals. Uh, it's always such a damp squib, uh, an international friendly. Um, I can think of many things I'd rather do than watch an international friendly. Root Canal uh, would be in amongst them. Um, yeah. Is, are international friendlies the worst, Anthony? I can't say that. I got up at 2 a.m. or whenever it was on <clears throat> Perth time. So, yeah, I think the writing was on the wall with that one. And Stevie Clark definitely put out the uh, the B team. Um, went one up right enough, but um, didn't last long, unfortunately. But, uh, yes, no, they can be a bit... I thought the whole point of um, all these different competitions was to try and eradicate the international friendly, but here we are, still doing them. Um, I managed to get on a boat on to, over at Rocknest on Saturday, so that was a really great day. And I backed it up yesterday with a double header at the HBF Park. Uh, the Glory women's team taking on Newcastle Jets, one their winners. Should have been a lot more, should be a lot more comfortable, but they, they got, got the win in the end. Um, and then the Glory men's team uh, with a last minute sucker punch drawn to each mm. and should have won it. But oh, the keeper sold the jerseys on the 90th minute. So that was a bit of a sick there. Um, but yeah, but that was my, my weekend. And um, yeah, and I said I backed it up last night <laughs> watching Celtic with one eye open. But it was that uh, was a very entertaining game. And uh, yeah, I managed to, managed to stay awake. So that was um, that was great. Is it still uh, Liam Reddy and goals for Perth? No, it was a young lad. Um, sale, sale was his surname, but oh, two, even his first goal, he he was pretty weak. He should have got a hand to the first goal as well. So no, he's a young, young keeper, but oh, <laughs> question mark, early question marks because they really they need to be that that should have won that game yesterday, and and that's trying to put them under the back foot. You know, leading it, so it was the first game of the season, so it's not mm -hmm. the, not the greatest way to start. It's it's fu it's a funny standard the Australian league at times because you get um. I remember we used to have the the go the ex Clyde goalkeeper. Oh, I can't even remember his name now, but but the guy came over from literally the Scottish third tier, or whatever, from Clyde and was playing here. Um, and then you get guys like Daniel Sturridge that come over and just kind of kick a ball. Uh, so it's a it's a weird one. I think if they come over here just um, thinking they're going to phone it in, they they don't really do very well. Whereas if you get someone like Diego Castro who actually has good talent and puts in some effort, he just dominates the place as what it is right how are you doing paul yeah good um back you know another um, well i've been mostly on four day weeks for the last three or four weeks another one this week got friday monday cut off coming up I'm off to sydney um to see paul mccartney so that'll be a a bucket list item to be ticked off so do, yeah do you think he'll another... sing hey jude reasonable chance reasonable <laughs> chance <laughs> Uh, I pretty much know the set list. I uh, this tour's been been to this this tour's done. Uh, I think the US and the UK, bits of Europe. Um, and but he has little. He has a few months off in between just to, I guess, rest those eighty-one year old uh, lungs and Jeez. body and all the rest of it. So uh, yeah, he's uh, he kicked off last weekend. I think at Adelaide, um, and he's played in Melbourne. Uh, I think if not, or tonight or tomorrow, and then sydney on friday night so yeah massive beatles fan so uh that's uh that's one not to be missed i don't imagine he'll be back on these shores again so um yeah looking forward to that but that and a few other things little bits of holiday breaks here and there means that i've barely done a full week's work um since the end of september so long may it continue <laughs> Do you remember uh back in the Martin O'Neill era when we had the Celtic fans used to sing Hey Jude? Yeah. Apropos nothing. I'd like yeah. really garbage song for singing at football. I don't know why we used to do it. Uh yeah, I don't I don't really understand that. I, yeah, I do remember that. It, yeah, I, and again, I can't really remember any real major link, but it is one of those songs that in a big crowd you get everybody singing it. It's just it kind of it's it's easy, right? So people everyone just, knows yeah. the words. Yeah, it's not difficult. <laughs> I, ha I have to say the uh, the glory songbook hasn't really updated itself since the last time I've been at a glory match. It's still the same old, same old, and a bit questionable yelling "you fat b" to the female goalkeeper go just, the opposition. Did you still do that? Did you go yeah, in the women's game as well. Yeah, in the women's game. 
and then when the team... I'm all for equality, but I don't know if that was quite that was quite the right thing to do. Um, and I just just very quickly you know, shout out to Brian Murphy for tab touch for my tickets yesterday. So thank you very much, Brian, for your hospitality. Gamble mm-hmm. responsibly. Uh, also, Paul, just on the topic of since it's weekend review, and you mentioned the Beatles, did you see uh, Barcelona and they're doing the Rolling Stones jersey for the El Clasico next week? I, I I didn't know it was for that, but I did see that the that that was um, I saw it on social media. I didn't see the context, but um, is it because the new album's out, or are they playing a show? Uh, I believe uh, they, they didn't. I, I I don't think they spoke about that so much. It was kind of the termed a tribute to the Rolling Stones. Which... Well, they've got they've got another new album out. It's the home, um, it's the home trip. It's just a sponsorship. It's just a. It's literally the 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 lips the tongue. and tongue. Uh, logo on the middle of the shirt but a Scottish yeah. team's put a portable toilet on the front of their shirt this week I'm trying to remember who it is oh, really? it's, it's Stenhouse Muir or the, it's like a it's like a piss take of I don't know whether it's actually real or not whether someone's just done it online but I need to find it later on it was pretty funny no yeah. pun intended piss take no, um, well, yeah, I think it probably to do with the Rolling Stones has got they've released they are either have released or are about to release um a new album, first one yeah. in a few years. And this this is a random shout out, but hey ho. Um we've gone down a, a little side side street, so we'll continue. Um one of my I uh, I'm friends with one of my old teachers from high school, uh, who was a big muso, still is, uh, and he posted that if if this was the start of the Stones' career, this album would be coming out in 2084, which is kind of <laughs> crazy, right? That's the dif- distance between the start of their career and this album. So, yeah. Um, so you're saying crazy. BTS are going to still be releasing albums in the 70s, 2070s? Is that what we're saying? I don't, I, I don't, cry, I don't know if that's, like, I don't know if that reference flies at all with the Celtic Dark Crowds. Uh, I only know of BTS because they sometimes wear Celtic tops in their, their music videos. Who knows why? Yeah. Uh, they lost on me. Sorry, man. It's a, some, it's a K-pop band, and they, they occasionally wear Celtic tops in their music right. videos. Uh, apparently, they're very, very big. Who knows? Uh, anyway, so we should probably talk about the Celtic Hearts game. Yeah, let's talk uh, about it again. So the guys, the Potnado guys have already covered it, uh, so we'll just give our own unique takes on it. Um, just bounce off each other and just see what uh, what we kind of thought of uh, overall. Um, Anthony, were you, you you said you were a bit bleary eyed? What did you take? <clears throat> I thought that the word I would use is tempo. I thought right from the get go, a pass was very crisp. It was at a good pace, um, and that's usually bodes well for Celtic because if you see the first 10 15 minutes and we're you know, doing the wee dilly-dally at the back and it's just going side to side. It's like, oh, we're in for a long day. But no, right from the get-go, we were um, we were, were firing on all cylinders. And Brendan did say in his post-match that he, he insisted on a quick start because he didn't want Hearts to get on top of us. He didn't want the crowd finding their voice. And it only took us four minutes to get things rocking and rolling with probably one of the best goals who probably see this season um i just take technically why te- like technique wise <laughs> it's exceptional and if that was english premier league somewhere else around the world it'd be like it'd be box office airtime just getting played over and over again um mm-hmm. so <clears throat> we started really quick um we didn't really let up until you know probably about 10 minutes before half time where it sort of we, we sort of ease up a bit and gave them a bit of possession and then we came out the second half flying again. Um, and then, yeah, I, I mean, they had their <clears throat> little rally um, when they stored. And then we saw that off and, and we stored again. And then it was it was all one-way traffic again. It's quite interesting. I know you'll come up with the stats in a minute, Sean. But like this, if you just read, read the stats, you'd actually think it was a quite a close mm-hmm. game. Obviously not the actual score line, but just the stats. But if it was anything but, like, I mean... That's as comfortable an afternoon I can remember at Tyne Castle. I mean, I know we've turned it in a bit of a hunting ground of late, but they was just they didn't offer really much at all. I mean, it was a it was a mistake for their goal. Um, and I just can't stand Naismith. Like he is just a horrible human being. And I don't yeah. wish somebody getting sacked or anything like that, but he's not gonna last much longer. He's you know. They made a big deal about filling up the stadium and getting all the fans in, and then they all left. 
they left at about what 55 60 minutes they all walked out so the stadium was empty after that and then they scored and we have a rally and then the jamie bother cheering the team on so no not for me um so yeah so i think we got our we got our rewards um we deserved everything we got and um yeah it was quite an enjoyable game actually good to watch yeah the the stats you're talking about like the i think they had like six shots. I, I, hold on, I've got it now. They had six shots in target. We had seven, right? Sounds pretty close. They had 13. We had 19. Sounds pretty similar. We edged possession, 58-42. Uh, the one I seen in Sky, though, was like um, our XG. Again, who knows? The different places calculated different ways, but Sky had this down as like 3.6 for XG, whereas theirs was like 0.6 or something yeah. like that. So we did have a massive edge on XG, and that kind of reflects the fact that they... Uh, when they got a kind of look in, they were just having pot shots at that point, you know, uh, and Hart was pretty comfortable with them. You know, there was one Hart saved in the first half where it's not even on target. No. Um, so I don't think it was, yeah, I don't think we're under too much pressure. And the only, I think we kind of let them in at times when our team, you mentioned like a 10 minute spell. I thought there was a couple of times where just for maybe a few shorter spells than that where our tempo dropped a bit. Um, I think there's a we've not showed the same consistency of intensity that we had uh, under Postacoglu. Postacoglu was really driving it home, uh, whereas with Brendan Rodgers, the message seems to be about uh, decision making. I mean, he does mention tempo and intensity on occasion, but uh, it seems there's more of a focus on decision making and that sort of thing. Uh, uh, his other his the, other comment, right? His other comment was resting on the ball. So like, yes, that was other one. There. Yep. Yeah, getting your breather when right. you've got possession so mm-hmm. that's definitely not an edge characteristic but it's, you know brandon mm-hmm. but i think coming back off a um international break when like you say all your players are all over the world which is literally all our players were <laughs> all over the world mm-hmm. um you know i was a good, a good performance and a good result and you know obviously bleeds into um, the athletic madrid game midweek so you can't really ask for much more as a as a build up to that and i i said in our text message chat that that was probably our strongest team we can put on the park at the moment. But with the mm-hmm. players that are available, I'd say that that's our strongest of living. I've chatted mm-hmm. enough. Paul, what do you think? Paul, yeah. Paul, how do you see it? Look, uh, Anthony's been pretty, uh, pretty thorough. Uh, I would say probably the first 50, 55 minutes, best of the season. Um, and then, yeah, we we do go, we go three up and we sort of, we do take the, take the foot off the gas a wee bit and just, we were a wee bit sloppy at that point. Um, and yeah, they had a couple little bits of, of you know, openings prior. And then the, their goal, you know, it's a great strike. Let's take the hang away from Shankland. It's a really good strike. He, you know, it bends outside of the post and just comes in off the post. Even Hart's heart, harshest critic couldn't really put point any finger of blame for him for that. Um, but we kind of, it's kind of in control. Like Mayra, Mayra in, intercepted it and then... He's got time to do nearly anything he wants with it. And then just inadvertently tries to do some link up play on the edge of the box. And it's a poor, it's a poor attempt to pass. And then obviously it's next. Um, but yeah, I, I, other, like, until that point, or just, just a little bit before it, um, first half we were excellent. We were good value for two. We probably should have been a little bit further ahead. Um, obviously we have a penalty and we, you know, we, we'll get into the guts of, of that decision in a little bit, but we really should tuck that away. Um, but we don't let that get us down and a few minutes later it's three and, and the game's done at that point. And and I think the key difference, and you sort of both alluded to earlier, is is that Postacoglu, and we've mentioned this before, it's just relentless, keep going till the very end, no let up. Um, there's clearly messaging from Brendan Rogers that that's not what he wants. And so you can immediately see that the tempo drop when because the, the, they know the game's won, right? Unless you have an absolute meltdown, the game's done and dusted. We all go, the game's done and dusted. But it kind of felt like players a little bit went like that as well. And they just got a bit sloppy. They just, you know, there's just that drop off in parts got their tails up a little bit. Um, we gave them an opening and, and they obviously had a bit of pride to play for. And, uh, and yeah, it was just a bit sloppy. For that, until that until the fourth goal went in and we, we again got that three three goal cushion it was just got a bit it got a bit sloppy not for that whole 10 15 minutes but but yeah it was you could definitely see the drop off in intensity but but yeah but prior to that 
I thought I thought we were excellent. Movement was good. Um, people looked comfortable on the ball. They were hungry to get on possession and um, willing to you know take people on. Midfield worked really well. Um, as did the front and the the back line didn't have too much to do. So, yeah, it's building nicely. I feel like I feel like as the weeks go by, you can you can kind of see the message that that Brendan Rodgers is trying to get across to the players start start to sink in and the time together, both on and off. Um, or on on the pitch and, and off at the training pitch um, is starting to to come together. So, yeah, bods well. I'm still not overly optimistic for um, for Wednesday, but um, you know, at least we're in good form going into it. Certainly, and, and as you say, coming off a an international break, it, I, I, what should have been a tricky venue with a small amount of away fans, it's uh, it's an excellent result. Yeah, it was curious the way Hearts. Like it, it, times they were just playing two at the back, it was really weird. Like you would normally expect, like if fair enough, your fullbacks can bomb forward at times, but if you're up against a team like Celtic, you should really be shifting your back line across at that point. They really they were dreadful. Just, they yeah, were they, left, just sure, they, they were exposed so hopeless. many times. And the amount of times that um they just showed a complete lack of like we they were just a busted flush. They were so we torn them to shreds so badly that. They just even tight when they had time to to look for a pass in the defensive third. It was they were just hoofing it anyway. Most of the time out of the pitch and immediately back in, you know, a throw in that we can. And then sometimes they were sclaffing it so badly that they were barely making. It was like a, a rugby player, you know. I hope I hope that in, Alex Lowry makes it into the Sevco team next year, man. He was dreadful, him. wasn't he? He was absolutely yeah. dreadful. But there He's weren't there, too many uh... players that like, <clears throat> himself in glory. Mm. He's their uh, white knight. Like it's like, oh, you know, he's 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 trying to come back. He's not a player for us. So, uh, but well, quick, well, quick shout for the best the best performance in a Hearts jersey. Uh, the, was the only person that could keep the ball away from a Celtic player was the one fan in the crowd who thought he was a bit hilarious two 0 <laughs> down when uh, Greg Taylor goes to collect the ball and he throws it away. The only person in a Hearts jersey in Tynecastle that kept the ball away from a Celtic player successfully. Well done to that person. <laughs> Sorry, well, we're Paul. talking about Hearts briefly. I was just going to say, like, you you could see how badly they were struggling with a game plan when you saw how deep Shanklin was having to come or had ch- had chosen to cut. He spent a good chunk of that first half be- near enough on the halfway line, more than certainly closer to the halfway line than our eighteen yard box. Um, and and I've got no idea what tactically what they were trying to do. Got a player like Boyce on the bench. You know, he's a danger man. He caused you problems. Um. Shanklin's, you know, he's not had a great run. He hasn't scored since August until he got that goal. But if he's, if I've not much, I've not really watched anything of Hearts. But if that's how deep he's playing, I'm not surprised he's not scoring goals. Like he's a good striker, right? He's he's a pretty good Premier League striker. Get him where he can do you damage in the box <clears throat> and get some service to. It. I don't know. Like I've, I, they've only won what three games all season. You can see why. Doesn't, and and but they're what sitting fourth. That shows you. We talked about this before. Two mm-hmm. wins shoots you up the table in this league. Um, we talked about about this in your absence, Sean, um, when we were touching on Aberdeen. Um, you know, mini resurg- resurgence. It's unbelievable to me that they're as bad as they are and they're still fourth. Um, and yeah, I agree with Anthony. I, if I can't see how Naismith hangs on his job too much longer. I, to be honest, I'm surprised he's still in a job. This you know today, he could have easily gone for that. You know, do you? Do you want him taking? If you're the Hearts leadership, do you want him taking you into a semi final? Well, I, he's been appointed as the manager three times this year, so it's an absolute shambles there. Do you know well, what I mean? Like, well, yeah, that's true. It's a farce. So who knows? <laughs> yeah, it's good. We're getting to Graham Marty levels here uh, over at Tinka, so and, and long may it continue. Uh, like, I think that's ten wins in a row we've had against Hearts, uh, well, and it's... they were saying that Kyogo scored eight games. Oh, he's play, yep. played eight games. Eight, eight out of nine. I think eight out of nine he's scored. He's the first. Oh, the I, think, eight, but I didn't verify that. Highest, highest runner goals against the team since Mark Haley back in That's the 90s. That's what we're saying on Sky, yeah. yeah. And, and look, they, they, uh, I think that was the worst they've been in all those ones. Even though we've won whatever it is, 10 in a row, I can't, I can't remember a game. They were that bad. The last one I can remember was uh, when Michael Lustig scored from like 30 yards out. That was the last time I can remember them being so abject at Tyne Castle. Uh, so they'll they'll roll over next week at Ibrox for sure as well. So absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad that glad they're not represented in Europe. Um, so let's uh talk about Celtic. Um 
I'm sure everyone's covered Matt Arelli to death. He is the, the headlines, and we'll probably just talk about him at the end uh, since it's pretty obvious. So let's talk about who else. Um, I was the player I was most, uh, this most of a talking point to me uh, was the, the first midfield substitute. Uh, you know, in recent times, it's been uh, Turnbull um, or whoever, Bernardo or whatever coming on. Uh, but Awata was the first choice to come on in the midfield. And I thought he was excellent. Uh, even the goal aside, I thought he was really good, strong, carried the ball well, made some good passes. I thought he was very good. And if it wasn't for the fact that we had such a strong midfield three, I'd be saying he's staking a claim there. Uh, Paul, Anthony, what did you did you make of him and anyone else that's doing it? Yeah, no, I, I, I agree with you saying, Sean. I think, you know, he's had to wait his turn for his chance because he's not really had, he's not really featured much during the season. He, he was playing more as a right back or centre half in the preseason, but then sort of seemed to drop out the reckoning early doors in the actual uh, you know, start of the, the league campaign. So it's good to see him get back in. Um, he took his goal exceptionally well. You know, yeah, yeah, uh, sorry. Um, o had two, two chances to score. Couldn't do it, and then uh, he just sort of said, "I'll show you how," and just absolutely smashed the absolute leather off it. And um, yeah, it was quite emphatic. I thought I almost thought it bounced out, and then I, I did a double take. Right, no, no, it bounced in, and then so I hit the top of the net, and it bounced. So great finish. Um, but yeah, range of passing, good control, strong. So I don't know. Is there a case? Is there a case for him against the Leicester Madrid midweek? I don't know. I, you I, would, I you think... wouldn't think so because well, you wouldn't. You yeah. wouldn't think so. You think you think the midfield three set, but like it's just. I think it's good to have a little bit of like a little bit of a difference. Someone just a little bit, you know, maybe a little bit stockier, a little bit stronger, a little bit less likely to give the ball away. Because I think Atati. Yeah. Atati does give the ball away a, a, a bit. He, there's a couple of times, especially in the first half, he gave one away. And against Hearts, well, you know, the guy kicked it out anyway. But against a better team, you never know. But then the flip side is that that aggressiveness and that that brashness that Hatati gives you is what leads to goals. And obviously that flick for the third goal, yep, yeah, was third. exceptional. That's exceptional. And that's that's taking a risk and you need players who take risks and he takes risks. But the flip side is that when you're playing against superior opposition, then the danger is that <clears throat> you might cough up the ball in, in bad areas and, and, and leave yourself sort of exposed. So what my point here is to say, well, maybe a watt is maybe the safer choice. If you're trying to keep it a bit tighter and you're really sort of holding your cars tight, tight to your chest. But when you're playing in the SPFL, I mean, Hattati is probably a go-to player because, you know, you want him taking risks. You want him mm -hmm. trying to play that pass and, and, and open it up. And, you know, it was his his run for the um, the second goal as well. So, I mean, he was contributing left, right and centre with assists or secondary assists sort of thing. So, you know, you, you can't doubt his what he offers to the team but you know i think a water just gives you something a bit different and i know we've shown uh, paul and i have talked about double pivots and you know but the other thing here is that i'd be comfortable with a water being in the mcgregor role if you were going to rest mcgregor as well because you know mcgregor just gets played and played and played and played and played and <clears throat> we just have to sometimes i think we need to sort of say well look you know if we get a cluster of fixtures then you know, we've got to be confident in our squad enough to say, well, we can we can rest him. You know, we can put him on the bench, and if he needs to come on, he can come on. But I think a I can play that role um, if if required. Because um, yeah, I was going to say it was amazing that it's, it's, it, McGregor didn't get two games for Scotland. But usually he plays like the full 180 minutes every time Scotland plays. But the he, he got arrested against France at least. Um, but yeah, but like I said, I, very, very yeah. I thought I should say Tati was great. Now, Matt O'Reilly, obviously, we'll touch, we'll come back to him, but um, I thought he was great. But I thought I said, I agree, a lot of was was good as well when he came off the bench. What well, you're mentioning there, and in, in Rogers' previous spell, he would what he would do is, um, like you mentioned, there'd be a spell of games coming up where you'd have like Dundee at home, St. Johnson away in the cup, and whatever. And then for those two to three games, he would put Scott Brown out of the team or the uh, whoever was, at, I can't remember who was at left back, or Michael Lustig or whatever, and Anthony Ralston would come in for Michael Lustig for two to three games, and that, that would be like a mini rest for those players, and that was what he, and but he wouldn't do it all at once, he would do it in a kind of 
a basis like that. And it would almost be planned in advance, right? Scott Brown, you're going to be out for these two to three games, assuming uh, the whole squad's fit, etc. So you might be right, that might be what's going to occur this time, but it's hard to tell, right, with Champions League. Sorry, Paul, do you want to come in on Iwata or do you want to move on to something else? Look, I thought Iwata was neat and tidy. Um, I would say that it coincided with the like the goal was around that time and it coincided with a bit of a drop off in te- intensity obviously he's coming in cold and you know getting up to speed and and hitati's energy's then lost as well so um i look i i think there's more to come from him it, the whole sort of banishment in the early part of the season was very weird to be honest given especially given he he sort of um filled in during that pre-season when we didn't really have defenders to do so so it was a bit strange i found it a bit weird that he wasn't around but it's great to see him back in and yeah it was a good contribution the the uh the other players reaction both on the pitch and since on social media to, to his goal it was great and it shows the the kind of depth and bo- you know bond in the squad there was a bit of banter on on instagram um on his post which was was nice to see apparently greg taylor's his english teacher which is uh <laughs> my only <mildly> concerning <laughs> but um but yeah it, it like it, it was a great finish took you know nearly took the skin off it and and yeah to anthony's point it was a bit of an optical illusion i thought it might spin out and then suddenly it spun mm-hmm. right back in in off the roof of the net so uh, whilst we touch on oh you know probably the unluckiest player in the squad beyond players that are injured um you know, can't buy a goal at the minute. Um, but again, put himself about neat and tidy. Just not really, you know, with a drop off in intensity like that, there's not really the same amount of chances being created. So I do feel for him a bit. But um, look, <laughs> Hitati is, I did want to speak about Hitati because as good as he was, he's also, there is a frustration with him. And he's, whilst he's a lot closer to the form we know he was, he can get to. Um, and look, the positives definitely outweigh the negative. I think it's remiss not to talk about some of the the stuff that the, the, the blind inside passes. There was at least two of them, and we lost. And then you're given possession up right in the middle of the pitch when we're obviously, you know, quite high up the pitch. So he leaves us pretty exposed at that point. The thing in his favor, I would say, is he's. I feel like he's, and, and Roger sort of touched on this previously, is he's adding an intensity overall, particularly in the defensive style. So when he's losing those balls he is the he realizes it and then he's first to react and he's he's charging back and he's he's you know throwing himself into tackles and more often than not he's helping to helping to either winning the ball back on his on his own or he's working with another player or two to to, to retrieve possession but it's a bit frustrating like when he was when he was on the fringe of the team and sort of dropping out um i think there was frustration was those kind of silly no look passes from wide into the middle and i think earlier in the you know i think was there a game one of the preseason friendlies we lost a goal because of that um maybe the bilbao game potentially it was the bilbao, um, it was the bilbao game. yeah so i just feel like he's he's sort of lifted his performance up again but there's then these these you know sort of daft mistakes creeping in um but he is showing the work great to to, to sort of you know rectify those but i'd prefer if you just cut them out entirely um but you know anthony's right he gives us something that nobody else in that midfield really does um you know that that desire to get beyond other players and get beyond the ball like his give and go creates made his goal pretty much out of nothing and the flick um to, to palmer you know if that doesn't come off you know there's a load of frustration etc but he's willing to take that risk and it just opens up the whole play from there so um hopefully he can just add a little bit more you know control and finesse to, to his game but he's definitely looking closer to the player that that we we know and love from from last season um and awata is is somebody that i'm excited to see what else he can produce um as far as europe i i would like them with you know anthony mentioned double pivot i would if we're going to use them in europe i can see it as a double pivot away from home potentially um i'd consider using that in madrid i i, I wouldn't use it this week you know we've got to if we're going to get anything out of this campaign we've got to try and win on yeah you mentioned those mistakes that Tati was making and they they would be punished right by a better team uh, exactly. and there, there was one mix up as well between scales and carter vickers that i thought well, what the hell they got away with that one again a better team even in scotland with the punishes and there, there was just numerous occasions where it was like we've kind of not done you know we've not done great there but we're getting away with it because hearts are garbage uh mm. but f- for me the biggest defender 
of all was uh, was Maeda. I thought he was rotten yesterday. I thought he was absolutely rotten. The amount of times he gave the ball away. There was one where he gets past the guy, gets a touch on it, and his second touch after he's passed the guy just puts it straight out of play. There were so many cutbacks that just went to no one. Uh, the goal he's obviously culpable for, but even before that, like he was just given away, away, away. And I don't know, like, what was also was interesting was that the next man up after him uh, was Forrest, apparently, first off the bench. So even Forrest is ahead of Yang in the pecking order now. Yeah, that, that was very interesting, Sean. I'll pick you up on that point, because um, the other thing I said in the group chat was that Mighty Johnson had quite a good show in for Ireland stores in one of the games they had over the weekend, the last weekend. So I kind of thought, well, if there's ever a chance for him maybe at least sit in the bench, on the back of that, you're thinking, well, the possibility... <laughs> And then James Forrest is on the bench. And you're thinking, well, James Forrest is near the end of his career where you've got, you know, obviously Mikey Johnson trying hard to, to break in, break through. Um, but Brendan actually singled out Forrest after the game and said, oh, he should have had a goal and he played really, really well. And so he's he obviously still has a, has a fondness or a, a liking for, for Forrest. So I find that interesting. Um, I think when the game's won, it doesn't really matter. But when the game, when we're needing a goal, is Forrest your man? I don't know. Well, I, I, there was I, one I, where I, it's yeah. coming down with snow on it, and he absolutely killed it. Like he did, fair enough, nothing yeah. eventuated yeah. from it because it was in a bad yeah. position, but he pulled out there. Do you know what I mean? Like if it's Maeda, that's in the top tier. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I think it's quite chalk and cheese at the moment. Maeda is obviously 100 miles an hour, and it's either it comes off and it's brilliant, or it. It, it toe bashes and goes out the park and you're going, gee, is this not a footballer at all? Like he, he's he's mm-hmm. frustrating to watch at times. Whereas um Palmer, who I nearly called Silver, Palmer, um, definitely a lot more um possession based and very good user of the ball. So like he he goes not nah, percentages aren't there, I'll just pass it back to Greg Taylor and we'll st- mm-hmm. we'll just recycle the ball and start again. But if he thinks it's on, he'll whip the ball in. And when he does get across in it's usually a good one like the, the obviously the ball for the second uh sorry the third goal was his uh and obviously the first goal the pitch and wedge just over the top just perfectly weighted for um for matt o'reilly and let's talk about it like over the shoulder that's got to be one of the hardest things in football to do is like it's basically coming over you he's hitting it first time he reckons he should have hit it even cleaner than he did but it was more than enough to beat xander clark um and that's a that's a brilliant goal, and and that, that just three minutes in, four minutes in, that just gets you off on such a good footing in a, in a supposedly tight game at a horrible place to go and try and win a game of football. So, um, to have the belief to do that, but like I said, the execution to be able to pull it off, um, you know, for Palmer for me, uh, he's grown on me like every game. Like I just think he's he's a very he's clever. Um, he's not got the pace. He's not a quick winger. So that, I think that's the thing is that obviously Jota was very busy and he's moving around and a lot of like, you know, it, a lot of jinky sort of moves. Whereas Palmer's not like that. So Palmer's like, yep, yeah, I'm going I'm, to, if I can get across then I'll get across then. If I can't, I'm going to check back in. I'm going to play the ball back to keep possession. And that's that's a very Brendan Rodgers way that he plays. And he fits that, he, he fits that style well. But that whippy cross that he's got, causes problems as a defender that is very hard to deal with when the ball is coming in at an angle with pace those floaty crosses defenders can eat those up all day but when you're whipping the ball in like that and you can get it on the back stick or you can you can pick someone out you don't get goals from that and uh it, it showed and he you know two two assists i mean he's he um he was he was very very good and um yeah. again I think that I think for you Sean that sort of highlights the frustrations of Maeda I, I don't think Maeda had a terrible game yes he was culpable for that goal he had, like I said he, he won the ball he did the right thing he put the tackle and won the ball but all he had to do was either play it up to Kyogo or I don't know just not play a square pass away from um a Wata or a Tati, whoever he can knock it back he can knock it back to heart right. Uh, or who found the park either could have done a bit could have done about three three different things with it but he just yeah. he, his execution was, was was poor for that in that moment but um you know he bundled the second goal in and you know he was there and he's he, he gives you you know he always gives you 110 percent. so i mean you you can't sort of fault fault the guy for that but i, um, I think i can ask for more than just effort in, in, my, in a champions league team <sighs> He'll be right. worth his weight in gold. He'll be worth his weight in gold on Wednesday night. Like, because to be honest, like, if you're asking me, 
who I would start, I'd start him, right? And Wednesday night, he's the best we've got out there. But I'm just saying, like, it's frustrating. Like, we, we need, if we want to be competing with Atletico Madrid, we need an upgrade there, right? It didn't support, like, the, the other side's more of an issue. Well, the, no, I don't know. Anthony's talking the depth, about the depth Palmer is the there, issue. Right? The depth, the depth is the issue. I think Palmer's a, a decent player. He's not Jota, uh, and and Mira, he is where he is. Um, but I was I wasn't surprised to see Forrest um, be first pick off the bench. Um, Rogers rates him. Um, Yang's been crap. He's been, <laughs> he's been over the course. Yang's been bad. Is injured. Uh, bad is injured. Uh, Tilly is Ro- not Ro- ready. Rocco Vaca uh, doesn't make John- there. Yeah, and Mikey Johnston, to Anthony's point, yes, he did score, but it was against Gibraltar, so let's not get too excited about that. Um, so I, I'm not hugely like he. I think uh, Brendan Rodgers made a comment along the lines of he's, you know, he's now got the opportunity to push on in training and 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 show that he's worthy of of that place. So he's throwing kind of throwing down the gauntlet to him that you know that that's a challenge the squad's got. Right? There's 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 depth without being. It's deep in that there's we've got lots of players that could fill those those squad those squad bench places players places. I guess what we don't think is that there's that many that can probably arguably push themselves and take the shot off the guy who's in there at the minute. Um, to me, the only the only from what we've got the the, the wings potentially debatable, and how long scales can keep his jersey. To me, they are the only. Until January comes around, they're the only decisions to be made. I can't see much movement other than rotation for um you know, just to, to rest players um at times when you can you can do with it. I really don't see any much more happening than than, than that at present. Um whilst we're talking about um rotation, um a little bit surprising that um Lagabielk has dropped out of the squad completely, particularly off the back of a good international break for him, he obviously got a start, scored a goal for Sweden. It was a sort of sort of second string Sweden side that was put out, but um given he he's our player and I guess Phillips was sort of brought in for, for the Champions League and now he's probably going to struggle to get a spot. Um but they're probably thinking that he's you know he's the more experienced player at that level. Um I don't know. When Phillips first came in, I thought he would end up getting more Champions League game time because I thought would, the injuries would take longer to come back, and yeah. then there might be a there might be a chance of or might be a reasonable chance of us sort of going. Actually, this guy's now irreplaceable. Let's let's buy him in January. I really don't think that's going to happen now. I'm not having that Phillips. Sorry, uh, he reminds me of Shane Duffy. I'm not having him. Uh, I, I was quite surprised to see him ahead of Lagerbielk on the bench. I know Lagerbielk's had a bit of a shaky start as well, but like, um, I'm just not having that Phillips. As a, I, think the, I think the reality there, though, is that if you're a centre half on the bench, you're only getting on if there's an injury. Really, I mean, unless you're unless you're deliberately rotating players and you're you're easing players in and you're only giving them an hour or here or whatever. The reality mm-hmm. is, if you're on the bench, you're only getting on if there's a an injury. So I mean, maybe he just went, yeah. We'll we'll get you in on Wednesday night or whatever, but I'm um, I'm not reading too much into that. If, if it comes a pattern, then obviously that's different. But I mean, it's one game, so why we'll we'll wait and see on that one. Um, Kyogo, good finish for his goal. Um, yeah, he's, he's not getting involved as much. Yeah. No, I know, but I I so he was he was in the right place for that one. And for me, that was a stonewall penalty. I don't know what the the like the uproar yeah. was. Cochran lost the ball to Maeda and then made a beeline for Kyogo to try and win the ball back. Very clumsily clashed out in the back of his leg, took his knee out. It's a penalty. But, like, you know, apparently, oh, you know, it was very soft and, you know, VAR. And this is where Naismith, all four goals were preventable. I mean, what? what? <clears throat> well, every, every goal is preventable, right? It's moronic. Every goal is pre- preventable if you defend properly, if, if the other player's not better. If your goal is a superstar, blah blah blah. It's, it's I think the, I think the sun I think the sun got to Nesmith's heat to the he just like it was the whole game. It's like, mate, it's all a hat. You put one on, like, you know, numpty. But no, for me, like I I don't know, Sean, what do you you're the you're the you're the de facto I, referee. I mean, I I don't know, mate. Me. I'm an actual referee, sir. Yeah, no, <laughs> de facto referee. He, he is the ref. <laughs> I am a ref. Was it on, go get, was it on get my was jersey. It magazine or something? You remember? You are the ref. Do you remember that? I'll tell you a word for it. I'll tell you a word for it. I had to, I had to 
shout down a, a referee supervisor who told me who didn't know the rules recently. Um, the whole, you know, if you score, if you hit the crossbar from a penalty, you can't score from your own rebound. And this guy's trying to tell me, like, oh, that should be a goal. It's a, it's a live ball. And I'm like, no, you can't score from your own rebound. Anyway, unless it comes off the goalkeeper, you can't hit it twice. Uh, sorry. So, yeah, the penalty, right? Uh, no, it's not a penalty for me. Uh, but also, I don't think it was obvious enough for VAR to intervene. So I think uh, the referee's wrong in this case, but I think VAR was right to not intervene because I don't think it was clear and obvious. I thought it was very a subjective thing. And so you're saying subject- it was an umpire's call. Yeah, and what exactly. And what was subjective about it was that is a foul if you consider Kyogo to be uh, in possession. Uh, in my personal opinion yeah well it doesn't even have to be in control like uh, essentially if you have like if you're the closest player to the ball kind of thing like within two meters of it then you can consider that player to be in possession and i I didn't really consider that to be the case but uh nick walsh may have and that's and and if that's your opinion that he is uh the closest player to the ball slash in possession slash able to take control of it then that is a foul so it was like the, the action that Corkin took was a foul if Kyogo is not just a... And if Kyogo's not in possession, then Kyogo's basically creating an obstruction and it's technically a foul against Kyogo. I, that I think for me is one of the angles, it's not very conclusive, but there's the other camera angle where it just looks really bad. Like the it's con- the, tease, yeah, from the, con- away, the contact yeah. point of view, yeah, I'll be honest, I yeah. like, and I don't think that angle was shown, shown, if it was shown, it was shown once quickly last night on Select TV, because I, until today, when I saw the, that other angle on um, Twitter, I thought it was soft. Like, I thought because there's nearly no, there's no contact at, at the foot and leg level, which is where you're looking for it, right? Um, It, it looks like he's he stepped across and he's sort of, anticipated the challenge and gone down easily now he had probably has gone down a little bit easily but when you see that second angle he does get caught pretty heavily behind the knee it's definitely enough contact um to, to be a foul but to sean's point it's like it's then an interpretation of his is, is he sort of in possession or in the area of being possession now i would actually say that he probably is like if he's without that contact that he's probably able to gather that ball in the way that he stepped across into that space um and if nick walsh has seen that i i agree then VAR can't really um, sort of overrule it because it, it, you're in, you know, your interpretation, it, it, the contact's clearly there when you see the right angle. So um, I don't think much on social media is looking at the nuance. So I've seen maybe one or two people talking about the nuance of is he in control? Is he not in control? Is it his ball or not? But most people are just going, oh, it's not a foul. Because we're, we're, they're looking at that other angle and that's the angle that's been shared by the other lot. The one mm-hmm. where it, you know, at foot level where it looks like he's, but to me, the other telltale sign in this, which we've all played the game, right? As soon as you go like this as a defender, <laughs> you're worried, right? <laughs> you're not doing that if you, if you've made zero contact, right? That's, <sighs> that's kind of, you know, 99 times out of hundred, if you're waving your arms around like this, you're up, you're worried that because you've made contact and you know that's probably going to be a foul against you. So the <clears throat> the flow on point from this is is who do we get to hit our penalties? Because well, Hatai was not it's a good was discussion, not, yeah. He was not convinced against Livingston when he scored, and then that one he's obviously rattled off the post. <clears throat> who who's who hits our penalties? Because um I don't think he's the man. Um uh, he hit that same post in Sydney as well, the same post. Mm-hmm. In the shootout. Hatati. So like, I really, I really I, wanted I, to make a comment about moving goals across the world, but I'm not going to do that. It's okay. I, I I don't know to be honest if I mind that much. If a player's hitting the post, it's like yeah, like I mind. You're getting, it's, it's, the keeper's not getting it. Put it that way. No, right? but no, but he's not going. The one he is Livingston was a crap penalty as well. I mean that snuck in. It I don't know. I mean, you know, that was lucky. Um, he hasn't been like yeah, he, he's still on them because. Until this point, he's still been on them because he's not missed one, right? They ha- None of them have been amazing. They've been decent without being... But, you know, from 12 yards, you've got all the advantage. Uh, there's a big... There's lots of calls coming in for Kyogo. He's your striker. He's a great He's a great scorer. Larson was a great scorer, and he was fucking awful in penalties. Like, he missed, he missed plenty, and eventually he got taken off him. So... I was looking up the stat. Kyogo's taken three penalties in his professional career. One in the J2, one in the J1, and that one against Kelly that he missed last year. He scored the two in Japan, and he missed that one for us. 
and he's got taken off after one. To me, I'd be I if I was Rodgers, I'd have them one you know I'd not maybe not before Madrid's, but after that, between before the weekend, I'd have them on the training ground for I don't know an hour or two and put them through a comp like the first the, your main five or six players who are are guaranteed starters. I'd have them have an an. an non-stop penalty competition mm-hmm. and see who comes out on it. And and that's, to me, it's Matt O'Reilly. I'd give it to Matt O'Reilly. Yeah. Like, you know, he's, he's a, apart from anything, he's a guaranteed pick. He's in super form. He takes the other set pieces. He's a clean you striker know. of the ball. He's so, a cracking striker. The only thing that I, I'm kind of leaning against is, is a completely irrational thing of, I feel like left-footed players miss more penalties than right-footed players. <laughs> but, but, and it's just a thing. That's just a thing. For, so, for Southpaw. But Andy Bremer used to take penalties for Germany. He didn't miss many, right? So, um, uh, look, for me, it can, it's got to be, if it's not him, who is it, right? Either give Kyogo another crack or uh, Alistair Johnston. Well, I'm trying to like, say that. Then you, you're, you're off to your fullbacks then, aren't you? And then, like, you know, to the, is it AJ, Gray Taylor? But, I mean, they're going to be playing most weeks. So, mm. You, you want someone you, who's you, in your team. You somebody who's going to play most of the minutes and be like, so in the game, because the other thing is, if it's somebody who's coming off after 60 or 70 minutes and you get a crucial penalty in the 81st minute, then what you do, that's your, that's the problem we've had, right? So uh, I, I'd, I'd put them through a drill. Uh, that's what I did. So basic, but I'd put them through a drill and find, find a proper penalty taker. And yeah, I don't disagree. I don't disagree. But, for, but, look, but on purely purely on where we're at right now, Matt O'Reilly for me. I, I don't agree. So this take, right, that any penalty that goes in is a good penalty, I don't agree with that take at all. Uh, Any time that a penalty is like hip height, you know, like within, you know, if a goalkeeper moves, it's the easiest part for him to get to. Any time a ball goes there, even if it's in the net, I, to me, that's a bad penalty, right? They've so got to be a few inches off the ground or up in the top corners, but the top corners yeah. give me the fear, I'll be honest. I, I quite like those ones that go along the ground, but out of reach of a goalkeeper's foot. So like they can't get their body there in time. Do you know what I mean? So so when Hitati is putting that one, he's aiming for I know he's missed, but he's putting it for the bottom corner. He's putting it to a point where the goalkeeper's not going to get to it, even if he guesses it right. So at that point, the goalkeeper's no chance anyway. You're just a question of whether you're inside the post or outside of it. You know, I actually don't mind it so much. It, it, like if a player can hit a penalty and is willing to, I'm happy for them to take it. That's, that's my feeling. Anyway. The the other player that might prove over time if he's a stick on for his position is is Palmer. Yeah, because he's the one, and I know this phrase is normally reserved for left footed players, but he has a cultured right foot, uh, <laughs> and he and he reminds me of uh, obviously switching the dexter, dexterous foot. Uh, he reminds me of Alan Thompson a lot. Uh, that's, that's my... I like he's got that whip on it. Mm-hmm. So, you know, he, he, from the shooting outside the box, both shooting and crossing, he's got that kind of flat rip across it and he gets big movement. Um, mm-hmm. So I, th- I think, and he hits with some some power. And um, I think that's part of the issue on a penalty as well. The harder you, you know, the faster you can move that ball through, the less reaction time the keeper's got. So, was it, was it Roy Aiken who used to say that? If, if I, I it smash the penalty, was it, I, I can't remember if it was Roy Aiken or someone else to say, hit the penalty as hard as I can, because if I don't know where it's going, then neither does the goalkeeper. I can't remember who it was that said that. <laughs> that could quite possibly be a Roy Aiken quote. <laughs> could easily yeah. be the bear, couldn't it? Easily it was, be the bear. It, it was definitely someone at Celtic, I can't remember who it was now. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so I don't know, man. Like, dude, we've never really had that many penalties to have to worry about it before. So the worm seems well, to if we get one, if we get one on Wednesday, it'll be bloody important. So mm. we're more likely to get them in Europe, aren't we? So no, because we're not getting the re- the refereeing decisions are going against us in Europe so far over two games. So I don't know about that, but yeah, maybe maybe we'll get the... not, to, not to hark back to the Perth Lorry here, but it was very refreshing to watch a game of football yesterday with no VAR because the A League can't afford it. But is that right? Actually, I didn't know about that. Yeah, it. but it's actually like great because the goal gets scored, and then you look at the linesman, linesman's flags down. That is a goal, and that's it. You celebrate, mm-hmm. and it's like yay! So, like, I mean, it, there was something to be said for that. Like, it was, it felt quite novel in a way. So, mm-hmm. yeah. backward is the word you're looking for. I mean, well, I remember. The, yeah. I remember the specific incident that led to goal line technology was the Frank Lampard one against Germany. Do you remember that one at the yeah. World Cup? Yeah. So that I loved it. That, that I, was specific... the, I was at the casino. I was driving. Yeah. 
So it's always well, some. I, it's never. It's never like a, a lot of small things. It's always one big thing. And it was that Frank Lampard one against Germany that led to goal line tech. But I can't remember what it was that led to VAR. It must have been something really specific and really high profile, and I can't remember what it was now. Yeah, I'll go back. I'll investigate. I'll find out when VR started. Then I'll go back three months and find out which uh, Real Madrid player got done. Is it, or is it too far? It's probably too far for that Thierry Henry handball against Ireland. That's too far. Back, yeah, yeah, I think I it was too far back for that. I don't know because because yeah, VAR's been around the longer. Yeah, VAR, the VAR's been around longer than we think because it's we've only had it for a year, but it's been kicking around and. In big leagues for what five years or something like that? I don't know. But that that Teddy on Rehan ball did lead to a rule change, so it may not have led to VAR, but it did lead to the rules getting changed mm. uh, around uh, even incidental handballs. The goal gets disallowed if it's in the build up to the goal. Mm. Like even if it's not a handball offence, the goal will still be disallowed because mm. it's a handball in the build up. So that that one was that one did get a rule changed. Yeah, it's always one some it's always something high profile that leads to a change, right? Yeah. I think the same with the five sub rule. That was because Serie A introduced it. And then everyone's like, oh, Serie A are doing it. And that kind of, yeah. That, that's, these things don't happen. Like, they, it doesn't come from some inspirational person at FIFA that's making rule changes. It's always some big club that feels hard done by and then they force their change to stop it happening to them again. Yeah. Anyway, sorry, that, that was a massive tangent there. Um, anything else? To, so we t- we've covered quite a lot Celtic Hearts game. Like reasonably enjoyable game, comfortable win. Uh, anything about the the Hearts fans and the empty seats that we want to talk about, or do you think that's been done? Oh, look, just just the I, I, I saw the tweet and I thought it was, it was just about thinking about tweeting something like it, and I saw it and I went, oh, well, too late already. And it was basically Hearts should what was it Hearts should start thinking about selling away tickets for the second half. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. I saw someone <laughs> saying well, the thing that is. <laughs> I was just going to say, like, they made such a big deal about this cut in allocation. And then that section beyond the, is it the group four security mm-hmm. signage that was up, there was a massive empty space there before we yep. even started. So they haven't sold that, that allocation. And then obviously, and, and there was other seats scattered around the ground, which may be sold, but obviously people weren't turning up for, for whatever reason. Um, and then, yeah, like it, by, they're streaming out the door by 51 minutes when it's 3-0. So... It's not a good look, is it? It's a pretty poor show. Yeah. And it's someone it's, did it's, the it, sorry, someone did the maths and it was two thousand two hundred unsold. So and that doesn't account for season ticket no shows. So somebody just, said uh, somebody said that the hundred and fifty thousand quid they could have made selling tickets to Celtic, um, that could help pay off Naismith when they sack him. <laughs> you're not wrong. It's not wrong. Yeah, that's absolutely correct. Um Anything else uh, happen over the weekend? Well, all, 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 all I was going to say is that I think Hibs were abjectly, abjectly terrible against the Huns as well. So Edinburgh is not having a great time of it at the moment because both both sides of the city are in dire straits. But um, I watched the highlights on the way before I left uh, work tonight, and yeah, they didn't offer very much at all. And the keeper for the first two Rangers goals was pretty David Marshall. Was it Marshall? Was it Marshall? Marshall. Still Marshall, Marshall, yeah. Terrible. He's he's he's, Terrible. Had, he's had a, he's had a severe decline. He he's uh, probably he's, needs to be uh, to be, to be last season. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'd be surprised if he's still there. Like he's still first pick after January. You'd think Montgomery would sort that out by then. Mm. But yeah. Uh, well, uh, only thing I wanted to to sort of I know we said we'd touch on it in more detail, but you know Matt Matt Riley. Um, Anthony's right. The goal's phenomenal. Um, the skill over the shoulder to hit that. And if he thinks he can hit it cleaner, if, that, if there's a better goal than that this season, I'd be very surprised. It's absolute class. Um, the ball's decent. Well, the ball's very good. It, his run makes it. But after that, like, it could go anywhere. He could fresh air that. And on the left side, come over that shoulder, he's basically hit, he's basically hitting that with nearly no time for hand uh, for foot eye coordination it's just it's just brilliant um but he was he was brilliant all day um apart from that little period of intensity drop off he was as guilty as others he, he sort of a little bit sloppy got caught in the ball a couple of times but for the first 50 55 minutes he was unplayable um and and back to that we've talked about a lot really playing box to box a lot of the time dropping in behind beside Carl when needed, making tackles, but then sort of running the midfield show as well. Um, very rarely loses the ball. Obviously, Hitat is the guy who takes more risks, but O'Reilly, you know, 
his, his range of passes, his quality of passes, his composure, his, his touch. He's just gone to our next level under Rodgers. It's great to see. And, and and really from here, it's how long can we hang on to him? I'd say till the summer. Well, you don't know. I mean, part of the reason he dropped down to MK Dons was to get first team football and to play regularly. And he's now getting that at Celtics. He wasn't getting that last season. He was having to fight for his, his spot with Aaron Moyes. So he's established himself this season as a first team starter. So the question is that when he does decide to move, you know, he's going to have to be careful because he's still young. He's only 22. So like you want that development where you're playing week in, week out. You do not want that development to be you're on the bench. And you get, yeah, yeah. And that you just get means 15, 20 minutes here or there. Yeah, but that just means he's going to go to Leeds instead of Liverpool, right? That's all that means. It just means you take him. No, well, he, could have went to he, could have went, he could have went to Leeds in the summer. I mean, he didn't. Allegedly, he, he wanted to. There. No, apparently he wants to. Celtic not to back. But so does chat is. Apparently, or he was persuaded to stay. He, what he initially wanted to go. Well, he's he, well, he, he's, he sings a good game in the, the post match interviews, which is like, you know, he's, he's made it sound like he definitely wants to be there. And, you know, Rogers mm -hmm. the man, and, and Rogers has been bumming him up pretty much every time, you know, he does a post match as well. So you want to take it at face value. But, you know, I think he's going to be worth a hell of a lot more than 10 million at the end of this season if he, if he keeps going the way he's going. Mm -hmm. um, but the one thing for me that you know Paul was saying with attack, he'd make those runs pass, but he does them, he does it as well quite well. And there's a couple of times where he was that you know Hattati had made the run, but so did O'Reilly, sort of thing. So that they're both pushing on and bombing on, and you need well, that. You've got to have players. Is it not the line. two of them that that sort of bomb on to the in the third goal that sort of they yeah. have a coming together? The two of them yeah. in the exact same spot, and they come together. I think it flicks off O'Reilly maybe ever so slightly, and then. You know, yeah. right into Kyogo's path, and he does the rest. But the, the only other thing I wanted to mention that I enjoyed was um, there was a moment in the second half where Callum McGregor was closed down by four players at once, and he still manages to find the pass. I enjoyed that. That that was like uh, ten minutes if, before the end. Of the if, game. We're, if we're talking about little things like that, I, what about Joe Hart's uh, pitch splitting pass in the first half, like right from mm. <laughs> from the edge of his box, right into the into the sort of inside right <sighs> channel in, in their in their half cracking pass. If he's uh, and did, did, did anyone have things. kittens when Carter Vickers did a drag back in the box? I enjoyed it. I did enjoy it. <laughs> I, 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 he I, he was I like I get again we weren't under that much pressure, but he was class. It's it was. like the, the the difference having him back in the side is 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 phenomenal. Um and skills skills was okay. He did, you know, had a couple of good blocks. He also had a couple of bloody awful attempted passes, yeah. long passes mm -hmm. that just one went out of the pitch and the other one went to no one. So mm -hmm. um 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 yes, he's he's had a massive um improvement. Yes, he's playing beyond expectations, but I'm afraid I'm not in this long term bandwagon that he's somehow the the no. solution well, presumably um, Narov Narovsky's the solution Narovs Narovs Narovsky is, it will be we'll find but obviously we'll he's, find not, he's not in the, he's not in the Champions League squad and he's obviously just coming back from injury so there's no rush on that but you'd expect skills to hold that jersey until Christmas-ish and and I'd be surprised if he's the first pick come the new year yeah we've got a luxury of this seven point gap keeping the pressure off and we're, we're we're pushing on to an hour so um any final points on this game or anything else that happened uh, over oh, the, the weekend only... The, only, the only thing i'll mention myself is that tottenham or andrew postacoglu if he beats fulham at home tonight then they'll go two points clear at the top of the epl yeah, yeah. he's doing well uh, he's doing well i was just trying yeah. to say another aussie cammy devlin taking a bit of a dive and a tatty sort of like barely oh, touched him. that was quite embarrassing quite was, that, was that ryan stevenson in the studio as well Ooh, was that doing the I, in the Sky I Sports? I, I think it was Ryan I, Stevenson. I, yeah, I didn't. I, I switched off at half time to go and do something when I came back, so I didn't Cause, see because they had so. Petrov and Boyd, and I think Ryan Stevenson was there as the kind of ex Hearts player, you know, that they put on. And when they go off at half time and at full time, Chris Boyd is raging. He's spitting mad about how Hearts. He's like, Hearts are just abysmal. With all. I can't remember the words he used, but he was like absolutely going for hearts and ryan stevens just sitting there laughing and this guy used to play for hearts and he's laughing at how angry chris boyd is getting about how bad hearts are and i was like oh my god this is just, it was it was actually quite funny like <laughs> stevenson trying to keep i think it was ryan stevenson trying to keep a, a straight face 
Chris Boy was giving it the big licks. Oh, you know, it won't be long till uh, Matt O'Reilly gets signed up by another team. Like they're just basically wishing our players away at the moment. It's like mm-hmm. the only thing they can cling to. It's not that they're going to get better. It's just that they're really hoping that we'll sell our players and and somehow weaken. But that's not going to happen. But yeah, mm-hmm. it's wishful thinking. And and Rangers was it three point oh? I mean, what was it two point oh three point oh? Like you know, this, their, their season started on the weekend four 0 win. Like as mm-hmm. if like sweep the first seven or eight games, however many games. Uh, uh, out the window like that didn't count like it's just the revisionism is just breathtaking it has to be said well based on, based on that they're actually one one goal better than us so far if you if, 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 on the clement on the clement, oh, the clement cup the clement <laughs> yeah. cup the sericey whatever you would call it <laughs> Bo, anything else to wrap up now will we um will we do uh man of the match and then our final yeah. thought let's do Go that so yeah, uh, man and match, uh, Matt O'Reilly. Anyone else? Matt O'Reilly. Yeah, and a hat trick, Matt O'Reilly. Boom. There you go. Yeah, yeah, that was easy. Okay. Uh, final thoughts. Uh, uh, New Rick and Morty. First episode dropped last night. It was a bit. It wasn't one of their best. It was one of the callback. It was a real callback episode, but it was good. Still good. Still funny. Looking forward to the rest of them dropping. I'm glad they didn't drop the whole season, otherwise I wouldn't have slept last night. Anthony. I haven't got anything. I, I don't know. I've had a bit of a thinny week. I've sort of, um, I haven't really been much time in front of the television, to be honest. I've been mean, sort of doing bits and pieces. So I just hope that we get a, a you know, it'd be great if we could get a result on Wednesday night. So, you know, we, I'd, I'd settle for a wee two each draw or something like that. That'd be fantastic. But um, don't know. But you never know. We'll see. Well, I'm less optimistic on that, but um, <laughs> we we can hope for. I didn't say I was optimistic. Right? I just no. Nah, we live. We nice. live in. We live in hope. Oh, look! It would be very Celtic. It'd, it'd, be, yeah. it'd be very Celtic to to win that home game, like, and then you know, have a debacle somewhere else. Um, our music review for the week. Um, our recommendation, rather. Um, the Libertines are back. Um, what? No, surely the not. Not the two. The liver, not the the Libertines not Carl are back. And Pete. Uh, are you Carl me? Pete and. And the uh, oh, I'm doing myself a disservice. Um, the the full band is back. Uh, new single came out a week and a half ago uh, called Run Run Run. It is uh, the opening track on a new album, which is going to be dropped on the eighth of March next year. So, some excitement around that. Um, Are Noah and uh, Liam getting back together next? Well, who knows? But yeah, no, so they 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 obviously patched it up and they had a new album. The last album was 2015, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, so nine year gap um, by the time the new one comes out uh, but I was reading an interview uh, but I, I caught the track on Spotify and then I read an interview afterwards and basically they're saying that at every other album that they made they were you know parts of the band were at all different stages in various sort of periods in their life or you know breakdowns or alcoholism or drugs or whatever else and this is the first time in their whole career where they've all really kind of been at the same stage and been working as a as a unit so um lead singles good it's called run 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 um you get that now and then yeah new album next year so exciting times hopefully they uh you know it goes well and they've ventured down under because they're they're a bucket list band for me as well i never got to see them mm-hmm. first time around so um because it was obviously all so uh so chaotic um but yeah be good if uh be good if they can get their, their act together and uh get a bigger tour going mm-hmm. all good uh right anything else guys before we sign off all good oh well, thanks uh everyone for listening in uh please do the social media thing that helps us including liking this on youtube if you're watching even if you're not maybe just jump on and give us a like it all helps us and hopefully um by the time you hear from us next, we'll have picked up a positive result against Atletico Madrid and then and uh, the capital against Hibs. But other than that, thanks again for tuning in and we'll hopefully speak to you all next week. Hail, hail. Hail, hail. hail, hail.